All right, so my install for my SHP2 was delayed. It wasn't the electrician's fault. He came and measured out the space for the installation. He looked around and he went to go pick up the materials at an electrical outlet store. And when he went, he didn't come back for four and a half hours. And that was because the electrical store was having delays picking up all the items we needed. And so it ended up being that he couldn't do the install that day because it was getting a little bit late. I gotta admit I was a little bit disappointed, but it's okay, it wasn't his fault. Oh! But it turned into a blessing in disguise because I got to talk to him about what I had planned for the installation of the SHP2 and where the circuits would go. That led him to explain to me some of the things about the installation that I wasn't exactly too knowledgeable about. But I'm glad that he was able to explain it to me because now I think I want to share with you the thought process of how I replan my SHP2 install after he gave me all of this information because I think for the people that are looking at the SHP2 and the Delta Pro Ultras, they'll want to know what are the limitations and what can it actually do. For my setup, I've equipped the system with two Delta Pro Ultra inverters and five batteries linked to this SHP2. Here's a quick tip, grab an extra battery cable since the SHP2 package only includes one. Each inverter can handle 30 amps continuously and up to 50 amps in short burst. To avoid overloading and switching to grid power, I'm doing my best to keep the loads under 60 amps. Mapping out the circuit breaker was our first step. It's much easier with a helper or tool to match each circuit to its breaker. The SHP2 accommodates up to 12 slots divided into four quadrants, each quadrant supporting up to 60 amps. This setup means managing loads wisely to stay under that threshold is very important. Keep in mind the total amps for the breakers can be greater in each quadrant. Just running loads cannot exceed that 60 amp limit. Our electrician delivered several essentials, including Romex wiring, new breakers, a flexible conduit, and various cables. To my surprise, he included different types of breakers than expected, a single pole instead of tandem breakers, which I had. After a discussion, we decided to adjust certain circuits, especially those with higher loads to into single slots, ensuring better management within each quadrant. I strategically placed high demand appliances like the washing machine, dishwasher, air conditioner, and refrigerator each in their own quadrant. This distribution helps manage the load more efficiently. Additionally, I installed a soft start on the AC to reduce the initial electrical surge, making it easier for the inverter to handle. And I placed the lowest load room with the AC in its own quadrant. We also upgraded our washing machine to a heat pump model, which only requires a 120 volt plug and consumes about 400 to 500 watts per hour. These changes not only improve efficiency, but also allowed me to get higher demand circuits into that quadrant. If you want to check out a video about the washer dryer, I'll link it now or in the description. I hope this walkthrough helps you understand the intricacies of planning and installing the SHP2 system. For those interested in more detailed steps or specific adjustments, I've included links to relevant resources and videos down below. Remember to like, subscribe, and click the bell for updates on this project and more. Check out the affiliate links in the description if you're looking to purchase any of the tools or equipment discussed. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.